Hi, I'm Rufus Philpott, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here for Notehead Media. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We are here at the 2016 Winter NAMM Show, Anaheim, California, and I am sitting next to the one and only Rufus Philpot. What's happening, Rufus? I, I can't. I'm a germaphobe. I can't touch your hands, mate. Okay. okay. Well, I'd like to say hello to all the boys and girls out there in NAMM land. There you go. We did an interview, it was a while back. It was, it was far too long ago. Exactly, and we got all the info on your musical upbringing and your career, and by the yes. way, that stuff, that, that interview, and all that good stuff in the interview, still up on the website, just nice. go to forbassplayersonly.com, and the little search thing, type in Rufus Philpot, and it will pop right up. But let's catch up because uh, you've been busy doing a lot of things. I know yes, you've been playing with Carl Verheyen. I know you've got your own project. You've played yeah. with a lot of other folks. Bring us up to date a little bit on okay. uh, what you've been doing since we last um, talked. Well, in reverse order, I just got back from the UK. I did a bass clinic out there for a great uh, bass guitar store called Bass Direct UK, oh, yeah. which is sure. really fun. Mm -hmm. And Mark, the owner, is out here today. I just bumped into him. So that was great, and that was for Exotic, the bass company that you know I've been with for a few years. Um, so I did that. Just been playing at the Baked Potato up in Studio City here in you know in Los Angeles with an eight-piece well. band. Yeah, there's a new band I'm doing. It's called Generator, uh, and that's like an eight-piece with three horns, uh, with a great keyboard player called Sam Barsh, who's been working with um, you know, like Kendrick Lamar and Jay Z and all these guys on the hip hop scene. But he's great with the jazz stuff too. So that's been going well. Um, I have a band also with Carl Verheyen and a drummer called Andy Sinisi. We just used to have some with Scott Henderson too. Um, and uh, I've been teaching a lot more recently. I've been doing some stuff. Um, I hooked up with Scott Devine and uh, did some things, some seminars for Scott, and they seem really popular. So I've been increasing my own tuition stuff and there's a presence on my site, rufusphilpot.com. So I'm doing Skype lessons and I'm posting video stuff, new segments. Because it seems like there's still a market for kind of good quality bass instructors, even though I thought the market was saturated. I actually think there's a space for the right type of stuff. You know, I couldn't agree you know. more. You know, you mentioned Exotic. I know you've been with them for a few years. Tell me about the Exotic basses, the instruments, why you play them, what you like about them, because they are fabulous. Let me tell you about Exotic. All right. Okay. So Exotic guitars, basses. Um, you know. A couple of people have asked me, because I posted quite a few videos on, on Facebook playing Exotic recently, and, and they've had a lot of views and people are really interested in the bass. And a guy the other day was, who was a you know, pro player on the scene, he was like, I'm interested in one, why should I get one? And I just chose to answer him publicly and I was just like, it's three things, like they're well made, they sound good, and the company listens to the artists. You know, those three things are the basic premise. So. You know, there's a lot of well-made bases, and you can get it. You know, I've had endorsements with a couple of pretty large companies, but sometimes where it would fall down would be if you had suggestions on how to improve something, or you wanted your own instrument just tweaked, and it and it might not be done quite to your liking. You know, and with Exotic, we wanted to get a lighter instrument because the earlier jazz bases were over 10 pounds, so we wanted to get them down to nine-ish, and that's a five-string, right? Well, Toshio, the head of the company, and, and Mitch, who I work with on the artists, you know, like with the setups and so on, they've been working with the guys in Japan too, and they've now reduced the weight with select body woods by almost a pound on average, which is great. You know, on a long gig, a bass that weighs 9.2 rather than 10.2 pounds is, is a huge difference. It doesn't sound like much, but it is it, significant. massive. Yeah. And we've recently changed the neck profile a little bit, so it's a little slimmer now, because the early ones were a little, little beefier and the new neck dimension is a little slimmer and we've also done like a vintage tint on the neck so it looks older and more aged so that it's not that stark looking pale wood you know really nice so and these are all things that i suggested to them it was like me and travis carlton particularly were on at them yeah. about the wood yeah. and the weight and well maybe we can do this we tried various options and just me myself i in the last two months we tried four or five different pickups in the base because they're really into like hearing what's good. You know, it, like they build their own pickup, but when I was talking to them, I'm like, well, I've got two bases of theirs, so why don't we make this other one more of a vintage vibe one, different bridge. Let's try some different pickups we tried. Uh, Nordstrand, 
and Karen makes some great pickups. Yeah. So, you know, um, what else do we have in there? Some Lindy Fralins, which were more like hi-fi sounding, a little more like the top end was a little, you know, more open maybe. But I, I'm more of a, if you know my sound, I don't have that real zingy sound, like a darker sound, right? So right now I've got Aguilar's in there, which are kick ass, they're really good. And carries are really cool too. So we're gonna try some different combinations of carries with maybe a different preamp or in a passive mode. But there's so many things. So I love the fact that companies into developing the instrument and fine tuning it. And they really are. I mean, I honestly, I, I don't say this stuff unless I mean it. I mean, I, I'd be out the door if I didn't believe in it. So they're totally happening for that, you know. And they're in Van Nuys, which is like 10 miles from where I live. So I drop it around there, sit with Mitch, we chat a day later. It's done, you know. It's great. That's great. It is a great company. Toshio, you mentioned, great guy. He's an amazing guy. Yeah, he is. Well, how about the future, Rufus? What else can we look forward to seeing and hearing from Rufus Philpot? Uh -huh. Well, Well, um, we were just talking earlier before we started the interview. Uh, interview. I'm sort of long overdue for doing the solo album. Um, so my plan is this year to do that. I'm probably going to do some co-writing with Scott Tibbs, who was the keyboard player on the CPT Kirk Trio CD which is one I did with Kirk Covington, which you can also get on RufusPhilpot.com. So you should be buying that already. Um, and Scott's an amazing writer. Like he's, he's like a kind of animal, you know, incredible sounds. And, and, and he also works with Beyonce and all these people doing orchestration. But he's an amazing jazz, you know, compositional guy. Really brilliant. So I'm probably going to work with him. I want to handpick a few drummers. And this is kind of my idea. Uh, there's a band I lead called Down to the Bone. I like yeah. the acid jazz kind of funk. And we tour and we do like festivals and stuff like Long Beach Jazz Fest. We'll do Capital Jazz in DC. And I've had different drummers do that band. So I've got to hear a lot of guys. Um, so I, I'm, I think I want to get Cliff Armand. Cliff played with Wayne Krantz and Michelle Camilo. Still plays with Michelle. Amazing drummer on the East Coast. And then I want to get Steve Haas and maybe Oscar Seaton, who plays with George Benson out here. And I want to handpick a few drummers so that the album will be, you know, tunes that I might even write specifically with guys in mind. You know what I mean? So it's not just, oh, here's a tune I want you to play. It's like, here's a tune I actually wrote thinking how you would play the groove. You know what I mean? And especially guys of that caliber, you know, where Cliff plays certain feels. So great. And Oscar, too, is the most incredibly creative drummer. So that's one thing. And the other thing I want to do more on the... You know, I do master classes and clinics. I've done them all over the world, but I want to be doing more of this because the students I get, it seems like the stuff I'm teaching is of value to them. You know, so I, I might even uh, probably time to write the book this time as well. I should write a decent book on maybe some advanced techniques, improvisational ideas, you know, concepts that I have. It's great that you have such a, a passion for education too. That's good to hear. I, it's really, yeah, I, I really am enjoying it more and more as I get older. Yeah. Good. Last question, Rufus, yeah. and I don't remember if I asked you this last time or not, but what would you be if you were not a bass player? Something outside of music? You know, it's a um, good question. I mean, I, I mentioned to you earlier, I do a little voiceover work. So, honestly, the voiceover stuff and the acting stuff I did in England as well, I played Sherlock Holmes, actually. You may not believe it. Um, and, and I really enjoyed it. So, I mean, if you're in L.A., there's always a chance of doing more in the, you know what I mean, sure. in the arts field. So the voiceover thing, I just had an audition this morning. I used to record something here at NAMM for my uh, agent. So I want to be doing more of that because I love doing it. And it, it's very complimentary doing voice stuff and bass playing it. So many similarities to the, re the recording process and interpreting a piece of music or a piece of script, a piece of text. So definitely more of that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, that's great. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep us posted. And, and uh, sure, when do you think your record will be out? Let's be realistic and say probably late summer, early okay. autumn. Of 2016. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, oh, yes. well, that's great. We will look forward to that. Rufus Philpott, great catching up. Thanks Thank very you. much. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep us posted on all that good stuff. Right. And we'll look. <laughs> <laughs> From the 2016 Winter NAM show with Rufus Philpot of RufusPhilpot.com for Notehead Media Group. I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com.